football managers and football is a bit like a, a relationship. Nobody likes talking about their exes. And when you, you have an ex, you kind of forget about them and you move on. But yesterday's game of football was a bit like going back to the Ronnie Dyla years. The Ronnie Dyla years and the end of Ronnie Dyla's football. And it was, it was horrible to watch. And it was, you know, it was boring and couldn't break teams down. And, but Ronnie's time at Celtic was fantastic, if you ask me personally. It was a fantastic time to be a football fan. Anyone that run buses and a lot of the guys that run buses at that time, um, that still some still do run buses. It was a fantastic time to get tickets. It's a fantastic time to get tickets for away games. You can get as many tickets as you wanted. Um, away tickets in Europe were easy to come by, and um, it was a fantastic time. The, the fan base then were a bit more together than they are now, and definitely a bit more. I would say yes, they are. They were definitely a bit more together. The away fans were were more together. The home fans were definitely more together. But there was that big section at the top of the stadium that was blocked off for the whole season. Fairweather fans have returned and um, they get on the back of the team when things aren't going. Have, have we been spoiled over the last as many years? It's a, it's a worry. It's a worry. The, the, the way that the fan base has changed. Celtic fans, let's be honest, the Celtic fan base has changed. It has changed. Um, people moan about the fact that the atmosphere at Celtic Park and then they moan about when the Green Brigade starts singing songs that they think aren't Celtic, but it's songs that's been sang at Celtic Park since the 60s and 70s. Um, and yes, maybe times have changed and maybe it's time to move on from singing songs that are over Irish. Te- no, it's not, right? If other Celtic fans around the stadium want to start singing, there's nothing stopping you. There's nothing stopping you at all. And rather than getting on the backs of the team. And yesterday, yes, the team was awful. The team was woeful. Brendan Rodgers was brought in as some kind of saviour after Ronnie Tyler. And he didn't particularly well, but he had the players to do particularly well. And he was given the standard of player that was brought in. But then went through a period of, of change and we brought in Ange Postacoglu. And he completely wanted to change the way that Celtic was. was. And it was a new dawn. It was a new day. It was a new dawn. And I can remember with the, the, the then CEO who was chased out of Celtic because he wasn't he wasn't from the right family, even though he was a Celtic man, but he came from a rugby background and he came with a, a new perspective on how to run the football club and, and the way forward. But he wasn't one of Peter Lowell's pets. He wasn't one of Peter Lowell's pets and he wasn't in the, the, the family. He wasn't really family. Now, I mean, he and that. He wasn't Phil Mitchell. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. But anyway, we've got back Brendan Rodgers and the transfer window's been absolutely r- ridiculous. Um, so says the one and only John Hartson. John Hartson says, Kyogo is copping a bit of flack. His goals per game is ridiculous. Uh, from, that, from, that, from that point of view, Celtic and uh, need to go forward. He said, selling Gigi, the big grumpy Greek, uh, was a mystery. No, it wasn't, John. It wasn't a mystery. When a player wants away from Celtic, um, a manager's not going to keep him. It's as simple as that. When a player hasn't gotten enough game time and, and he wants away, and he's, you've got to remember, he took to social media and he was having a dig at Celtic on social media publicly. So when, when that happens, it's you know your time's up. It's like the, the little, the wee Ned and the, and the boating lake. You remember the boating lakes that you used to get back in the day? And you're, you're out in the rowing boat. And it's the, the guys at the side, 67, your time's up. Get, get in. And I'm coming out there. I'm going to tow you in. And the guy's running about the fucking island and the boat going, uh, I'm getting my chance. Anyway, it's going to be a long video this morning. John Hartson also says that Celtic needs some more attacking prowess, a different type of striker from Kyogo. Uh, when Kyogo's not scoring, when he's a decent back at it. Totally dominant in the game, but he would like to see three or more, two or three more players arrive in this window. In what positions are they going to play in, John? Look at the players that we've got away just now. Um, who do we move? We can't keep on just buying players in. We need to move players on before we can get players in because, let's face it, I thought that was quite a strong squad that we had out yesterday. I did say, if you went on to Twitter, I did say on Twitter beforehand, before the game um, yesterday morning, and I thought we should play a 3 5 2. We should be playing 3 5 2 formation at home, especially when team, I mean, Brendan says, look, they play this low block, this, this 4. Uh, one four four one one. It's not a four. It's a six. They've got a back six. If you look at the game and you watch any game at Celtic Park recently, teams are going to a back six. It's as simple as that. And we're, we're not getting around the width of the, the team. Our, our wingers yesterday weren't as close to the byline as what they usually are. They were coming inside a little bit. Um, Paulo uh, Paulo Bernardo. He should have hit that cracking one. He should have. I mean, it's an open goal, Paulo. You're putting that over. 
and then Brendan Rodgers is blaming the pitch. I understand that they've had a lot of bad weather back home, but come on, it looks like they've been playing rugby on the pitch. It does look like they've been playing rugby on the pitch. Anyway, Chris Sutton has also has his say. Chris Sutton says, it's a strange position the Celtic find themselves in. Top of the league, but there's a sense of things are simmering with a section of the fan base. And we know why. Celtics seem to have a plan for recruitment under Ange Postacoglu. Now it seems really complicated, and it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. We, we make a move for our players early under Ange, and that was one thing that was refreshing about the manager. He would get his players in, and that was it, done and dusted. When it comes to the, the end of the transfer window, Ange is like, well, I'll be in my bed. <laughs> you know, he told it like this. He said, no, we've done our business. I'll be in my bed. Uh, you could sit up and watch the end of the transfer window if you want, but I'll probably be sleeping. <laughs> and Brendan Rodgers, um, I, I have no idea what's going on. It's... It's disheartening. It's di- it is disheartening. Yesterday, uh, I mean, I did a watch along live uh, watching the game, and I, I mean, I was yawning. It was bored me to death. If I was at the game, I probably went to the pub. No, but no, because I was one of the ones that used to stay to the end of the game, unlike a lot of the fans. Brendan Rodgers seems keen on bolstering, and uh, obviously the striking department. I think it's unfortunate that Rocco Vata didn't get a chance. I think when you've got a player that that scores a goal against Bucky Thistle, um, he, he obviously has an eye for goal. Bring him on as a striker. And let's talk about Kyogo. Right? You can't give Kyogo stick. I mean, I was giving him stick yesterday saying that his movement wasn't as good as what it has been. His movement wasn't as good as what it has been. But let's face it, you're not going to try and move to get any positions if you're not getting supplied the ball. And yesterday, Kyogo wasn't getting supplied the ball at all. There was hardly any crosses coming in for Kyogo. There was one or two during the game. But statistically, I mean, it was... It was, it was, he's up against giants and there's, there's high balls coming in for Kyogo, which is absolutely ridiculous when the guys are just going to out jump him. The fact that Sky Sports are saying that, look, uh, the interest in Van Hooydonk, the son of Van Hooydonk, is still there. Celtic are going to remain cautious, cautious in the final week, the final days of the transfer window, the final days of the transfer window, where we're going to end up bringing in Van Hooydonk on loan. And to me, for a player that has fallen out with his club over the last year, um, is that a good thing? And what does that say to young Rocco Vata? Rocco Vata is on the verge of signing this new contract at Celtic. Celtic, Brendan Rodgers came out and said the other day in, in the press conference, he said, look, if a player's good enough, it's my job to bring in players through the youth team. He says, we can go out and we can spend £5 million on a player, but we might have a, a player in the youth team that we can develop into that £5 million player. Kieran Tierney, for instance, was sold on for 20, 20 odd million. Um, you know, that's the way that Celtic do things. We, we can make players better. But if they're not being given the chance, um, if they're not being given the chance, I'm all with Rocco Vata. I, mean, he, I fully expected Rocco Vata to get on the pitch yesterday, and he didn't. Some, some strange, strange decisions by the manager yesterday, but um, he will know what is best for Celtic. He will know what's best for Celtic. Uh, we'll look at some of the headlines kicking around. Um, about Celtic. Rogers admits Parkhead surface more field than pitch after Celtic labour against Ross County. Alistair Johnson's deflected first minute strike won us, but Lewis Palmer twice saw penalty takes. Yeah, we can talk about that. And then obviously Paulo Bernardo. Now, one of the interesting things yesterday and Celtic, I don't know, I think maybe, I, I don't know, go and read the, the article on Celtic yesterday about the, the game. And they said that. Uh, the ball comes in from Alexandro Bernabe to Leo Labada, and Leo Labada hits it off to the one and only Alistair Johnson, who then hits it in the back of the net. That's not how it happened. The ball comes in from Bernabe. Um, Leo Labada tries to take a shot. It then comes right back off a player, a Ross County player, and lands at the feet of Alistair Johnson, who then strikes it, and it deflects into the net. And Celtic could try to butter it up as if it was some fantastic play by Celtic. And it wasn't really. The best part of the play was Burnaby. I thought Burnaby is a massively improved player after, um, from what we've seen him before, I got a bit of stick saying, look, Burnaby was rubbish yesterday. When you look at his positioning and, and the way that he played and the speed he played and, and you know, some bits of the game, he was an improved player. He was an improved, improved player as far as I am concerned. But it is just the one Celtic fan's view. So give me your view in the comment section. And remember, if you're going on to Amazon today, click the link 
link before you go into shop in Amazon. Anyway, Rogers claimed that the Celtic Park surface was more like a field than a pitch as he side laboured towards a 1-0 win, which restored their five-point lead over the Rangers in second place. Alistair Johnson's deflected first-minute strike looked to open up the floodgates, and we all say that on the live. We were watching the live. There was a few of us watching it live on, the, on YouTube, and it was like, yes, that's it, come on. And then nothing happened for the next 93 minutes. Uh, Ross County hit the crossbar. Jesus, you remember that bit? Uh, they threatened, and then it's always the same. The last 10 minutes of a game, teams are going to go, one then, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's have a go. Let's have a go. Joe Hart makes a save, and he's a freaking... Bro, let's talk about Joe Hart. He made that save, but he also made a couple of clangers in the game. Anyway, um, the fact that Alistair Johnson did score that goal, and it was enough to secure the points. Yes, a win is a win. Callum McGregor said, look, uh, yeah, a win. It's always, you've got to win ugly, and you're not going to always win games beautifully. But um, I do think at home, we do toil. And the, the Celtics, and it all comes down to the Celtic supporters at home. Um, they're all entitled to have their say, but it's not the same crowd. It's not the same atmosphere as it was in bygone days. And I don't know if it's maybe because after 2020, and there's a lot of people gave up their tickets and there's a new there's a new fan in, there's new people in, in the stadium. I don't know, I'm not sure. Um, I certainly know that I gave my ticket up a year ago um, purely because I wasn't give, using it enough, so I gave it to somebody that would use the, the ticket. Lewis Palmer missing two penalties, absolutely ridiculous. Brendan Rodgers opens on negative fan reaction is another headline. Brendan Rodgers opens up on negative fan reaction. Celtic boss Brendan Rodgers um, has reacted to the, the fans' reaction at full time. Uh, the Scottish champions obviously ran out the 1-0 winners. Derek Adams was happy because they uh, kept it 1-0. And um, have your say, Celtic fans, on this today. We might even do a live today at some point. Let's just talk about what is going on at Celtic. A draw is a disaster. A defeat is catastrophe that could cost us the title. There's been a betrayal of trust at Celtic Park, as some people are saying. Um Celtic are taking our money, they're banking the money, <clears throat> and they're not improving the team as much as what they should be. Bringing in nine players in the summer that were complete prospect players is just is mind-boggling. We didn't need all those players. We didn't need prospects. Let's go back to Ange Postacoglu's final season at Celtic. And we all knew to improve the squad, we needed three or four quality players without losing anyone. Three or four players that would make us better in the Champions League, that would just give us that chance of winning. Um, we did get more points this season than under Ange Postecoglou in the Champions League, yes. But let's face it, the team is no better and the style of football is definitely not any better. Um, the, the Daily Record are obviously going with, I have set Celtic a question, what the club is really, uh, how Hugh Keevan still gets any any space at all. Quick check of the Celtic headlines. Uh, Brendan, sad admission. Anthony Joseph's striker update, talking about the Sydney Van Hoydunk situation. Uh, Sydney Van Hoydunk, a player that has not been getting on with his team, who's been trying to force his way out the team, uh, out of the club, because he's not getting game time, and Celtic fans seem to want, want, want that type of player in the door. It's the same type of player that we let go under the Grumpy Greek, and uh, he left under similar circumstances. What do you wish for, Celtic fans? Anyway, Morton and the situation is another one. Uh, the striker, uh, John Hartson. The fans will be delighted. Uh, no, they won't. <laughs> Jesus. And Odom Owen says that he wants to mould himself into a Matt O'Reilly type of player with his time at Celtic. Anyway, if we get enough comments saying, yes, do a live this afternoon, we will talk about Celtic. We might have a little chin wag about Celtic and what is going on. What on earth is going on at Celtic? And that'll be six o'clock Celtic part time this evening if we do it, if we get enough um, interaction on this video. And with that note, I don't know what to say. That was just absolutely rubbish yesterday. And let's be honest, we do need players in to make this team better. We do need to give youth a chance. We need to give Rocco Vat a chance. If we want to keep him as a player, play him. We can't give Kyogo stick if he's not getting the ball. So what does that then say about the players that's came in? Tell me what you think about Nico Kuhn yesterday. Kuhn. Anyway, on that note, have a fantastic day, Celtic fans. All around the world.